That's all very well. But how am I going to find that man now? He'll never come back to the Alambe. I knew the Yanks were strange, but to talk to yourself out loud and in French to boot? Some are stranger than others. See you soon. McPherson, here again. You've got back your taste for life. Hulo, you remember the guy who ran off the other night when I wanted to talk to him? Had you ever seen him in the Alambic before? That man is dangerous, Hulo. He's the prime suspect in this nasty murder business. Should I know him? No, I, I do not know who it is. But he did not seem too keen on meeting you. This time, Ulo, I think Malay really has done something shady. Has he been back since that night? McPherson, you are wasting your time with Malay. He has not been in the Alambic since... Anyway, I already told you he's a stand-up kind of guy. He paid me what he owed, and that is all I care about. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Ulo. You were the last person to see Malay before he disappeared the other night. You don't just run off like that for no reason. Believe me. Malay has got something serious on his conscience. Maybe he's mixed up in this murder. I will not say another word about Malay, but I am sure of one thing. He is not a killer. But that doesn't explain why Malay ran off. There must be some reason. It can't be me or he'd have run away as soon as I arrived. McPherson, leave Malay alone. I saw his face when he ran out the back door. It was not guilt that made him run away, it was fear. I don't mean to go on, but it was very strange of Malay to run off like that. It really sets you thinking. In fact, I'm thinking about talking to the police about him. Him and his circle of friends. The guy who ran off seemed much more guilty. Maybe it has something to do with politics. He had a foreign look about him, this chap with his moustache. Try finding him. What do you know about my investigation, Albert? Strangely, no one has said a word. Nobody cares, except your client, I imagine. The press has hardly mentioned it. Even the police have not really investigated with much conviction. This murder has not hit the headlines. But you must know a bit more about it than you're letting on, who knows? American tourists killed in their hotel room without so much as a clue? No papers, nothing? Have you got any leads? All that I know comes from the papers, and that's all I want to know. As far as I am concerned, the matter is closed, basta cosi. I won't bother you any longer, Ulo. But make sure I can still reach you. I may need you sometime soon. Goodbye, McPherson. Be careful. The private eye returns. When I read the file, I noticed the name of a certain doctor, Frank Kofner. What can you tell me about him? Dr. Kofner is our expert. Forensic scientist and above all, psychiatrist. The sort of guy who prefers the company of madmen and corpses to the likes of you and me. You don't seem to be overly fond of Dr. Kofner. Is there any particular reason for that? The chief of police himself imposed Dr. Kofner on us. It's not going to help matters any. 
Am I right in thinking Inspector Lebrun is in charge of the investigation on the White case? Would it be possible to meet with him? That way we can compare our information. He is not seeing anybody. Just make a statement. I've got some information on the Orfe murders. Exceptional information. Fresh info? You are better informed than us, are you? I have some fabulous new information on the Orfe case. A portrait of the killer. Here, look. My God. I do not believe it. Let me warn Inspector Lebrun immediately. Do you recognize him? Wait, do you know who he is? You. Elouin? Jacques Elouin? It's impossible. Elouin. The name rings a bell. If only I could see that vision again. Control that vision. If only... The inspector would like to see you immediately. Come in, come in, dear sir, come in. Mr. McPherson, I presume, would be private detective? <laughs> I have no time to waste with snoops. What do you know about the White case? I don't have time to waste either, Inspector. I've got some news on the White case. I am listening, McPherson. Go on, fire away. I... I have a portrait of a suspect. A suspect who may very well be the guilty party. Where is this uh, portrait from, McPherson? What if I am mistaken? What if this man is not the suspect? Give me more details about the case and I'll tell you what I know. McPherson, you are not really in a position to make deals, huh? Before I showed up, your suspect had no face, Inspector Lebrun. Okay, McPherson. Say I do know him. Does that get you any further ahead? The portrait. You say you know who it looks like. That means he's a known criminal. He has a record. Who is it? Jacques Elouin. He's a private eye, an ex-cop. He lives in the 11th district. And he is in big trouble. The White Case. Why don't you give me more information? The public could help you and you could use this portrait to officially issue a description of a wanted person. You are very naive, Mr. McPherson. This man is incredibly dangerous. Our specialist, uh, Dr. Kofner, has informed us that the ritualistic nature of this murder could provoke severe psychosis in the mind of the public. Like in London at the turn of the century. He's killed again? Who's dead? Theo Mallet, the former doorman at the Orphée. Do you know him, Mr. McPherson? Maybe it's just a coincidence. Mallet could have been killed for some other reason. From what I hear, he was no choir boy. Mallet was decapitated, Mr. McPherson, like the Whites. He was an important witness in this case, one who did not have time to make a statement. His death means other witnesses are in danger. And that includes you, if I understand your role in this correctly. Now you have what you want. Make yourself scarce. I need to think. Goodbye, McPherson. What else did I expect? Looks like there's nobody in there. I need to find a way to take a look around. Good 
McPherson, here again. You've got back your taste for life. Look, I have a small problem. There's this lock I've mislaid the key to. Would you know of a way I could open it without damaging anything? That and a few sticks of dynamite should set you up for that bank job, right? Seriously, Mac, why would I be carrying all that stuff? Do I look like a hardware store? Oh, you know, there's no mischief involved. It's just for a friend who needs a helping hand. Illegal or not, I am not the one doing it, so... Okay, Mac, I will help you. But in exchange, I want you to do me a small favor. A little job. Do not worry, it is nothing risky. I know you are good at this kind of thing. This painting is a reproduction, and here is the real thing. Do you notice any differences? I won't bother you any longer, Hulo. But make sure I can still reach you. I may need you sometime soon. Goodbye, McPherson. Be careful. McPherson, here again. You've got back your taste for life. So there's the job done, quick as you like. Take your paintings back, Udo. I've finished. Better check in case I've missed out any details. I won't bother you any longer, Udo, but make sure I can still reach you. I may need you sometime soon. Goodbye, McPherson. Be careful.
safe like this, it's hopeless without a key. A letter of appointment, signed Grégoire d'Alpin. Are you? What do you want? I am a friend who has your son's best interests at heart, madame. Liar! I do not believe you. Jacques is not a criminal. Get out! He's not here! Scram! Madame, Eloin is wanted by the police for murder. Liar! I do not believe you. Jacques is not a criminal. Get out! He's not here! Scram! Any idea where he may be hiding? Hiding? I swear he's not here. Why would he hide? Uh, I've not seen him uh, for several days. I have no idea where he is. You're lying, Madame Eloy. Tell me where I can find your son. I mean him no harm. On the contrary, I need to talk to him. You do not want to harm him. Can... can I trust you? Please understand, Elway has not done anything. He's afraid, that's all. He's not hiding, but he needs help. My son is up there. Follow me. Upstairs, just go on up. Right. Jacques Eloy, I'm arresting you for the murder of Regis and Ruby White. I'm innocent. I may have led the murderer to the Eatons, but I did not kill him. The Eatons? What are you talking about? It's a long story, but this is what happened. It was after a rather tiresome case. The story of adultery that ended badly. The husband had hired me because his wife had supposedly run off with the money. She told quite another story, of course. I will spare you the details. I came home shattered during my absence. A certain De Alpin had come by about some employees who had swindled him. I knew that De Alpin was a banker and that there would be plenty of money in it, but I was dead on my feet. So I told my mother to call him back and tell him to get lost. That's when she showed me the check. So, off I went again. in the mud all day. And who scrubs? Old Muggins here. Hello, 
are you? Can't you see I'm not here? If it's for the poor, I gave at the office. Lovely day, isn't it? Say, can you give me the Eaton's room number? The Eaton's? What do you want from the Eaton's? Are you a friend of theirs? You don't look the sort they would associate with. I'm Jacques Eloin, private detective. I hate to be any bother, but I have a few questions to ask the Eaton's. A detective? I knew they were shady, those two. With all that riffraff that Paul knocked about with. That Montparnasse bunch. In any case, they have split. Montparno. You mean people who live in the Montparnasse district, the, the artist quarter? Paul hung out with artists there. Anywhere in particular? The Alambic gang? That's where all the layabouts met. Birds of a feather stick together, as they say. <laughs> These bloody rascals really want to drive me up the wall. I have a floor to scrub. So you with the mustache, clear off or I'll chuck you out on your ear. And the time he dressed up as an angel, and he... did not have a string on his bow. Berenice. Oh, sorry. Jacques Eloin. Perhaps you could help me. Why not? Would you like a drink? Come on, don't be silly. I'm a modern girl. Come, have a seat. You've never been here. I would remember your face. I'm curious to know what brings you here. Today must be my lucky day. In my job, I usually deal with punks, not cute dolls like you. I'm a detective. Do you happen to know a certain Paul Eaton? The American? Paul Eaton? Yes, I know him. He's been filling our heads with his stories for the past month. He and the owner are mates. Well, that's a shame. I was really hoping to find him there. To be honest, I went to his place before coming to the Alambique and like magic, they disappeared. So, I thought you might be able to help me. We do not really know what Eaton is doing in Paris. In the beginning, he said he was with his sister, a student. After a few binges, his sister had become his wife, and they were both onto the scam of the century. Interesting story about Eaton. Is he onto something big? Did he give you any details? Mind you, with guys like him, you never know what to believe. I am fond of you, Snoop. You know how to go about things. I'm going to help you. Paul Eaton was in Paris for a contract. A scam that would make him rich. His wife was his accomplice. Then he got the jitters. He's hiding now. Hulot, the owner, definitely knows more. You'll have to see him about that. Only thing is, he's not too fond of private Snoops. have been planning something. He could not have just given up like a complete idiot. It must be a diversion. It smacks of a wild goose chase. Charming and smart, that P.I. 
only he has it wrong. It was not the banker's money the Edens were after, it was a treasure he had hidden in his place. The woman took care of seducing him. Paul was there to pick the fruit when it was ripe. He was completely manipulated, that poor Paul. Charming. Berenice, I can feel that, like me, you're dying to know where Paul Eaton and his wife are. What was Paul planning to do after his job? Any ideas? The owner, Hulot, knows a thing or two. Paul only spoke English and he never mentioned any names. He could not have known much. It's not because you drink like a fish that you know more. It was his other half who pulled the strings. The owner, Lou, he's also your friend. Hmm. Would you be kind enough to introduce us? The owner's not here. He's just driven off. Actually, I think he had a rendezvous with Eaton. Damn it, this is too much. I'm always one step behind. This time, I'll catch them before they slip away again. It is simple, Jacques. The owner went dashing off. He mentioned a restaurant, getting back late. How would I know? A ah, restaurant. How fitting. I was planning on inviting you. But a restaurant in Paris... It's like looking for a needle in the haystack. Any idea which one? And why would I know? Eaton talked about going out to a chic restaurant with his wife, but he did not even know which one. It was Hulot who scribbled down the address before leaving. That's all you know, is it? In any case, someone as charming as you is always beyond suspicion. Ciao, Snoop. Good luck. seems to have been ripped out in a hurry. Hulot is implicated in this affair? But how? Who knows? He's a fence, is he not? I've brought you a little snack. Thank you. Can I just put it there? We'll help ourselves. Okay, where was I? Oh, uh, yes, the restaurant. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Shell Alexandre. Do you have a reservation? I'm here to see some friends. Two Americans, a couple. The Eatons. I hope I haven't missed them. I do not see any reservation under that name. Maybe they have reserved a table in another establishment. Oh, come on, try a little. Another guy may have joined them. A certain Ulu. You should have said so. Of course I remember them. They had quite a scene during the meal, arguing non-stop. <laughs> in the end, a man turned up, and they all left in a car. But you're mistaken about the name. It was White, not Eaton. Of that, I'm sure. I'm a private detective, hired by Grégoire de Alpin. I have to find them, and quickly. I'm fed up of chasing after them. Any idea what it could be? Got an address. Sir, this is not my job to spy on people. It would seem to be yours, though. All that matters to me 
is that they enjoyed their meal and paid their bill. Actually, they put it on their account at the Hotel Orfe. A French gentleman joined them and they chatted for a while before leaving together. I do not know what they want. I hope this is of some help to you because you seem to be completely lost. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orfe. How may I help you? Whites. I've come to see the whites. Which room might I find them in? We do not give out such information, sir. Not without the prior agreement of our clients. Come on. It's not as if I'm asking for the moon. I just want to know if the whites are guests at your hotel. I'm sorry, sir. I will not answer any questions regarding the Orfe's guests. Ha! <laughs> I had you going there for a minute. The Whites really are guests at your hotel. Why? I never! I... I... I strongly advise you to leave this establishment before I call the authorities. Hey, and um... While we're at it, any chance I can get their room number as well? That is enough. I refuse to talk to you any further. You're not the first guard dog I have encountered, but you're certainly the toughest. I'll let you think about it. Do not worry, though. I'll be back soon. It is better that way, sir. Okay, what do I do now? Now what? If you want any leads about the Whites, wait for me at the Nazi. I will give you some. This case is really beginning to get on my nerves. What can I get you, sir? A bottle, please. That will be five francs, sir. All right. Thanks, and good day. You're welcome, sir. Sit down. What do you want with the whites? You look like someone who might be able to slip me some info about the whites. We will see. How much will you pay? Do not worry. It's my client who pays. Ah, someone who gets things quickly. We're going to get along just fine. Now what do you want to know? How long have they been at the hotel? They've only been in the hotel for three days. Since they never leave their room, it does not take much to figure out what they are up to in there. No, they have never set foot here before. Have the Whites had any visitors since their arrival? Solitary types. If you ask me, they are not tourists. They hardly ever came out of their hole. They put everything on the hotel bill. Meals, clothes, alcohol. The room has been booked for a good month. The man went out a couple of times at night. Will you give me their room number? I'm gonna pay them a little visit. Room 507, but you are out of luck. They are not there. Must have kissed and made up. The dame has dyed her hair red. Look, I've got other things to do, you know. It's not like your money is going to a life of leisure. You ought to hire a private eye.
so I would like to take a quick look. Room 507. Just a quick look. That's when I saw the most amazing thing in my life. I do not know if it was the smoke that blurred my vision, but one thing is for sure. That creature was not trying to keep them warm. And the damn creature saw me. I have fought in the war, you know, but I've never seen the likes of that. When its eyes stared at me, I ran. Yes, I fled like a little kid. There must have been something in the air because I fainted right after that. I came around later, near the Alambique. That's where you saw me. Mom? Is that you? Ah, no. Jacques Alouin, I'm arresting you for the double murder of the Whites. Believe me, I'm not the culprit. Speak to my mother, she'll give you the proof. Well, thank you for your help. What? Yes, I had you followed, and you led us straight to the culprit. No. Something is off. I've been tricked like a sucker. But by who? <laughs> 